Hello, my name is The Weasel. Today, we're going to talk about when I first arrived in China. This video is about what I thought and all that. And I already did a video about where I live in Shenyang, so please watch that, even though it was a bit of a mess. And now, let's get started. I came to China five years ago in early January. Getting here was a lot of paperwork. I was not prepared for how long it would be before I could actually come to China. When I started it, I thought, oh, it'll only be like two months. So I went home to my hometown to visit my family. At the time, I lived in Vancouver, British Columbia, across Canada from my hometown in Ontario. I hadn't lived in my hometown for over a decade. It seemed like a great idea. I think it would be a short time. I didn't even apply for EI to get a little extra money before moving. Big mistake. It took eight months to get the paperwork done and head out. Luckily, my brother let me help him out building a house since he runs a construction business. I can't thank him enough. Because unlike the rest of my family, I had zero construction experience, and he did get me an extra bit of money to help keep me afloat at that time. So thanks, bro. Now, actually arriving in China was kind of a blur. The flight is something like 13 hours from Toronto to Beijing. Then I had to go through customs in Beijing airport before transferring over. It was here that I experienced the first thing you will notice in China. That is the amount of people. Everyone knows China has a lot of people, but it's a different thing to experience that. They have a saying here for big crowds. It translates roughly to mountain of people, sea of people. And it is so true. Getting on the second flight, which is a more regional flight from Beijing to Shenyang, I had my first taste of the second thing you notice in China, the total lack of English and the huge differences in the cultures that affect how people think and act. Now, I've traveled Europe before in non-English speaking countries, but in Europe we have a shared history. And while there are cultural differences, they're not quite so big as they are here. What I mean by this is because the cultural differences are pretty big, Sometimes you're unsure of what to do. You don't understand quite what is going on. You don't want to offend anyone. And you're just feeling a little lost. Add to this the language barrier, something I will do a video on as I still speak next to no Chinese after, even after all this time. And it's pretty easy to get confused and all twisted around. Continuing on, when I first arrived in Shenyang, I was picked up by the foreigner wrangler of my school. That's not a real job title. That's really just what I, I call her. And I'm so glad that she did that. Like it took her father's car or her husband's car and had them drive me. It was so, so nice. Like if they hadn't done that, I was pretty out of it. I would have probably ended up half dead in a ditch somewhere or something like that. So they drove me through the brightly lit city. Again, I was out of it. I didn't really notice much on what was going on outside the car. Then I was dropped off at my tiny little bachelor apartment. It was a bit shocking. Now, I'd lived in Whistler in the past, and I'd lived in small places before, because anyone who knows Whistler knows you live in a tiny place with a dozen people, really, to make ends meet. But what shocked me outside was outside my window, when I first looked out of it, there was a sign brightly lit for KFC. Like it's not really something you expect, something so Western right outside your window when you travel to a country on the other side of the world. The next morning was the next big difference for me, at least. Now, when I first moved to Xi'an, I lived right off the Taiyuanji Street, a big shopping street. Shopping districts in China are absurdly loud. You have stores popping speakers outside and blasting calls out to customers, music blaring from other stores, people yelling to talk over all of this. It is a true cacophony. Now, I grew up in the country, and even Vancouver is not that loud of a city. So this was a big, big change. I had the first few days when I arrived off to get over moving across the world and all that took a lot of walks in the local area, and it being winter in China, especially in the Northeast, the air pollution was not great. Now, it has gotten better in recent years, but I do still remember that 
this is the first time I could taste the air, like taste it like it tastes almost metallic. That was kind of gross and weird, so getting a mask was high on the agenda. The biggest thing really was the disconnect between how I thought China was and how it is. Like you're told how China has developed, but in my mind, I still didn't really feel that until I came here and saw it for myself. I still thought of it as a poor country before I arrived. The reality, of course, is much different and stranger in some ways. Now, Shenyang is not as developed as the tech hubs like Shanghai or Shenzhen, but it is a match for most modern cities around the world. In some areas, it's actually definitely ahead of Western cities, like how the phone apps are used and connected to everything. Now, the public transit is absolutely amazing here, too. Now, I'm still worried, even after all this time, of getting on the buses when I don't know the exact line because I can't read where they go, so I could end up anywhere. But when I first arrived, there was two subway lines in Shenyang. Right now, there's four lines, and they're actually opening up two more lines in the next few years. There's, and the subway lines, subway's running all the time. Buses come very quickly, usually depending on the line, of course. It's really reliable on that. It does close a bit early, but it's so cheap. Like it's too quiet most of the time. On the buses, that's less than a dollar. Right? It's like 50 cents, really. It's kind of amazing that they have such a good subway for so cheap and good transit for so cheap. And speaking of cheap things, the food here is so cheap. Like you can go to like a Western place and it is actually expensive. But if you go get Chinese food, like a lunch full of noodles, a salad type thing on the side, and a beer, that's like around 20 kwai, which is less than $5 Canadian. It's so cheap and so good. Now, what I meant about how it's kind of strange how it's developed, one of the things is, and I don't, haven't seen one lately, but you'd see like a Mercedes driving around and then... Behind it would be a farmer's donkey cart loaded with sweet potatoes. So you have an odd mix of old and new China going on. This is really seen in how it's sometimes hard for a society to keep up with all this change. Like I said, the China 40 years ago would not recognize a China today. It's pretty much two different countries almost. So a lot of older people keep habits from then just don't seem to match their surroundings, the modern buildings and tech everywhere. An example of this would be something I saw a couple of weeks ago. Now, a lot of restaurants or barbecues burn their like coal fires or firewood out front of the place in pots and that are like kilns. So it's hot and ready when customers want it for their barbecue, which is great. Like I love the barbecue, but these pots are just often sitting there outside, super hot. Like these would not be allowed in Canada safety concerns, but this one place took it way further and crazier. There was a van out front of this restaurant with its sliding door open. In that van, there was a huge stove burning away. Like inside a parked van, there was this massive fire billowing out smoke across the sidewalk. And everyone was just walking by like, oh, this is no big deal. I'm just like standing there like, I can't believe this. I'm just in shock. I just can't comprehend this. This ended up being a bit longer than I thought it would be, but I'm kind of glad for that. I got to share a lot of my experiences early on in China and even up to today. To me, China really hasn't gotten to be a place I fully understand. And I don't think I ever will understand because I'm still surprised by things all the time. That's part of China's charm, though. I love that there's always something new or unusual going on, more to learn and experience. Now, that's all for now. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment down below. Later.